Let's start with the meeting tonight. Let's start with um, the minutes of February 7. I noticed a typo on, in the. Uh, Sorry, I, so I am um, having an issue right now with this. I don't know why. Here it is. Okay, sorry, say that again. Uh, item two, the January 29 minutes, motion to reconsider. January 29, 24 minutes, passed unanimously. Motion to amend minutes, Ren, passed unanimously. Uh, yes. Um, and item three, uh, controller, a new chart of accounts has been created. Budget is postponed pending further Further investigation of salaries, I think it was. Okay. And does anyone have any other revision to the minutes of February 7th? Did anyone come up to speak? I'm just uh, as a practice before I got on the remote there. Um, was there someone remote sure. last on Wednesday? I was remote last time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, I'm an abstain. Oh, so I'll raise your hand for yay. Carolyn? No, no. One, two, seven. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and the affirmative. Uh, no opposed, correct? Mm -hmm. And two abstentions. <clears throat> All right, so we had two. Budgets to revisit tonight. Um, let's start with the controller budget. <clears throat> Do I take it, Charlie? Yes. You want to put it up? Uh, uh, yes. Thank you. Just go to slide three here, please. <clears throat> this is the adjusted one, right? Uh, you say uh, two nine on it. Two seven. Um, it says adjusted. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Um, um, is anyone else who's viewing it able to see it? Mine opened up the same. Yeah, but then no. it, it opened the same way. Yeah. No. Yeah, just, okay. It's not there. Mm, let me there. let me just yeah. re-download it. There must be something wrong with the That's file. Yeah. Is it viewing on the app? Uh, it's zero. Okay, right? Okay. 
Okay. So, uh, Christine, why don't we go on to somebody else? I, I almost have it. I'm sorry. It's, um... I can uh, transfer the file to the server. It's just so slow. And it's telling me to close things to save resources. Just give me one second. Is there a hit on the muscle on it, too? No, it's just because the Wi Fi is not great in here. But if some of us come off of the Wi-Fi, will that help? You stop watching a movie that might help. Yeah, real. Hey, hit the pause button. <laughs> yeah, everybody can hit pause just for a second. <laughs> okay. Okay. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, if you go to slide, start at slide three. Uh, this says um, that's the original budget. And uh, two little um, notes there, and the base salary is wrong. Uh, it was in the book. It should have been uh, one four eight zero one three. Um, but there's been no change since last year. And and the result was that um, the new salary was shown higher than the allowed max in the second schedule of the answer. The second group of the end schedule. Oh. And <clears throat> that's just shown on the next page, page four. So um, page five just shows the original budget. Uh, we, we talked about the expenses and so forth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, So on page six, um, shows the adjusted salary budget, and um, the, the new pay can't be any higher than one forty eight seven zero five. And we had a step in the in our erroneous budget last week of six hundred ninety two. That was the correct amount, but it was it was adding to the wrong base. Um, so the new pay is 148.705, which is the max of the group. And if you go to um, page nine, you have the updated department budget, which has a recommendation of 32,000, I'm sorry, 30, $362,370 with the adjustments in salary corrected that we just uh, discussed. So um, I'm recommending that the uh, Nicola's budget be approved for $362,370. I will note that I had a conversation with uh, uh, Alex McGee and, and with Karen uh, Malloy, and um, they will there will be some adjustments to the M schedule to accommodate some of the changes that they originally anticipated. There are perhaps other people in the M schedule that have similar limitations that couldn't, um, take, so they would not be able to receive the COLA that they're planning to issue once the uh, collective bargaining um, discussions are settled. Is there a second to that motion? Second. So and this is the final number? A uh, final taxation number after the offsets is three hundred and sixty-two thousand three hundred and seventy dollars. Three five three three seven oh? No, three three hundred and sixty-two thousand three seven oh. Alan Jones. Uh, the last thing you mentioned about adjusting the M schedule, would that be in this year's reclassification article? Well, I, accept, I assume that's the case. I mean, we haven't had a reclass meeting, right? And, uh, but that's the. the yeah, yeah. FY24. Yeah. Can I reply to that? Yes. Um, so there's there's two discussions going on. And when we have our reclass meeting, I'm asking Alex to join us 
it's actually not a union. It's a manager's, town manager's um, discretion rates. And so everyone should check their salaries for their managerial staff to make sure the new salary is not above the max salary. Because what usually happens then is the max salary, the difference ends up in the salary reserve and then gets added after town meeting because town meeting has to approve the manager's increase in salary. Supposedly getting Charlie, was it a 2% or a 3%? Well, they wouldn't discuss that because they won't discuss it until after the collective Oh, that's right. That's, okay, okay. that's right. Um, yeah. so, so all of that has to happen. And so money, my understanding is, and I'm going to make Alex and um, Karen describe it in full at our meeting, is that the anticipated salary will go into salary reserve. Town meeting will vote on the budgets, they'll vote on salary increases, and then that money will exist and it will appear with a new M class max next year and their, their new total, which is above the current max. Does that make sense to people? Yep. Charlie, does, is that yeah, what we yeah. Okay, go ahead. Okay. What happens if the collective behind agreements not agreed upon by next year. I'm just thinking about managers here, not collective bargaining. So well, I wasn't. I mean, well, but it's based I, off. I, I think yeah. the, the practice has been that they won't make a change in the end schedule. Oh, <clears throat> no yeah. call until after all these. Well, I mean, that's historic. Yeah. That happened. I mean, I, we have new captain management and new director of finance. So uh, I raised the question because in some of these bargaining units. It's gone on for three or four years. Yeah. Right. So you're giving me another question for Karen and Alex. <laughs> I mean, I, I wasn't saying that this is going to absolutely change that way. I was just right. saying that was their right. discussion. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? So uh, I think we need a second. I think we, we have a second. second. Oh, okay. <laughs> so if there are no further questions, Let's take a vote. Um, all in favor of approving the controller's budget at 362370, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you, Sophie. Yeah, thank you, Sophie. Yeah. Um, the next thing is to open the IT. I did not. Okay. Yeah, so there's a revote that we need to do. Um, I also do have a few updates on some of the questions. Okay. The floor is yours. So um, we hopefully got the new IT sheets um, sent out by Alex to me. What, what happened was the uh, manager of enterprise applications, which was vacant, was hired late. Um, just started I, either January 31st or the 1st of February for both dates. Um, and they had to hire them in at a higher salary than was the placeholder. So in addition to Alan catching something last week about this, and so we need to we will need to vote uh, the new total. So So with the, the adjusted sheet, the taxation total changes to 1,255,953. There's a, I guess an 81.24 difference in what was budgeted earlier versus what they had to actually budget. So that's the new taxation total. Um, so I'm gonna show, um, before we vote that, should I just go through the- Go ahead. Updates? So you would also ask, someone asked about the parking system. Um, that turns out there's gonna be more information coming from the treasurer because they really drove that. So once I've met with um, Julie, I'll have an update on that. More comprehensive. Um, as far as the records in the town hall basement, um, IT pointed out that they 
they digitize things in the order that they've kind of been told to. Um, but they don't make the ordering decision. I've asked Jim Feeney about what he thinks might be the next order of business, but I have not heard that. Right. So that's still, still outstanding. Um, the 10K service and maintenance costs for the body cam line going forward. Um, <clears throat> she thinks Patricia said she's going to ask to put that in the network budget going forward. So uh, FY26 and beyond. Any questions so far? Good. Um, the IT equipment, the server room is on the second floor. So it is not in the basement. So we're going to even ask about that. Um, <clears throat> the disaster recovery plans, I did have Tower Ford an email that Patricia sent. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because it's several paragraphs, but I think the upshot is they're aware of it. They are putting plans together. They've done some exercises. Um, so we lose the building that the server room is in. What, what do what we have to do? Yeah. yeah. So they are looking, looking into that. Um, Charlie, you'd asked if there are any more copper wire. And um, there's all the Centrix lines have been removed. She said there might be some POTS lines on the school side for a building alarm, but that's that's it. So we have gotten rid of our copper. And then finally, the network maintenance item. Um, there were several questions on about this. The first that Sophie you brought up was why was the budget book? Why was it different? Um, why was the uh, the FY23 budget? one number in the FY23 budget book and then another number in the FY24. And it was because there was a um, an additional, there was an appropriation in town meeting that was the, the second number that happened after the, book, the, the FY23 book came out. But he did say that that matches what's in the news. So I think we've resolved that. Um, the large amount of the actual of the network budget of 131, 431, um, basically, salary savings in IT was used to fund the network spend for the DPW growth screen project. Um, and it was used for networking, so it was not really, so it, you know, given the bottom line budgeting that we do, the bottom line number didn't change. They just used some savings in one place to, to do the other. And then finally, there's a 10K increase in the FY25 budget, and that's the data line for the police station for the bottom. So I think we'll find out about the digitization of records. I'll stay on that, not, not more like I said, the treasurer's budget. Parking. But I think that covered all the questions that got asked. All right. Any other questions that anyone has right now? Okay. Uh, so first, I'd like a motion to reconsider our previous vote, all right? Okay, so moved. Uh, second. Second. Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We now reconsider move the taxation item. total of one million two hundred and fifty-five thousand nine hundred and fifty-three. Do I have a second? Second. Any further questions? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Unanimous. Yeah. Thank you, Joker. Well. Um. Does anyone have any budgets for tonight? No. You have something? Yeah, we can do uh, snow and ice tonight. All right. Great. What better time to do snow and ice? <laughs> 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 Just have to work out. I think we knew last week that uh, we were doing a snow this week. Do you have things you want to share? Um, I just have a couple of just my notes here. I can share it after okay. with you okay. if you'd like. Um, it should be relatively quick, I think. Uh, so just a quick reminder um, about how we do snow and ice. So the budget that you see for fiscal year 2025, that's um, we take the uh, amount between 75 to 80% of the, ten, uh, the town's 10 year rolling average to come up with that number. So, um, and, uh, and as a refresher, um, this is the one 
uh, budget that we would actually be allowed to deficit spend on, but we've taken the visit, um, what many uh, municipalities do do, but we've taken the uh, approach to try to have more of an accurate representation so that we have a fully funded budget and we're not looking to do uh, either line item transfers or trying to make up the money at town meeting every year. Um, so this number uh, generally comes in pretty close to what we actually budget for each year. Um, so <clears throat> this year, year to date, we've spent uh, about $546,000 uh, across five events. Um, one was uh, the first storm that we had was a heavy plow, but most of what we uh, end up spending our money on is salt and sand. Um, so some other uh, large, some large picture items. Um, I know contractors have been difficult in the uh, over the past few years to try to get. Um, we checked with Mike and there are currently about 10 vendors who can supply about 50 trucks to us. Uh, most of our uh, in-house staff um, are actually plowing themselves um, salt and sand. It's typically done by our in-house staff, um, but there is one vendor who's available to us in case we were to ever need any extra salt or sand capacity. Um, getting to the vendors, uh, so costs on vendors have risen about 30% um, for the fees that they are charging the town for us to use their services for. There was a question that came in about what's the incentive that we're offering to vendors to try to get them interested in plowing for us. And that was the uh, $3,500 incentive it's basically ensuring that there's a base for the vendors so that every year it's not, a, it's, there's a guarantee that you're not going to lose money out when you come and you plow for us. So uh, you'll at least the $3,500 that generally covers about what it would cost for somebody to be insured uh, for their trucks. Um, so they get that even if they don't touch or plow. Correct. And it's like they, the way that Mike explained it to me, it's that uh, you'll, you're guaranteed the 3500 but the, when you plow with us, you'll make up that amount. So um, essentially, it's your guarantee. You're not going to be losing money out on us, but you do kind of earn it. If I hope I'm explaining that well. Well, it's a floor. It's exactly. It's a floor. That's a great way to think of it. And, and apparently this year, we've already reached it, so it's not no one. No one's getting a freebie. Right, exactly. Right, yeah, so they get the thirty-five hundred dollars if they only plow a thousand dollars worth of plowing. Exactly. If they plow five thousand dollars worth of plowing, they get five thousand dollars because they've already earned it. Got it. Exactly. And Mike's uh, pretty confident that the amount of vendors that we have right now, um, he's comfortable in working with. He thinks that that should be an adequate number to uh, be able to cover the town. Uh, we're meeting again with DPW on Friday. Uh, we'll let you know uh, if he thinks otherwise. Um, but I think uh, they're pretty comfortable in their snow operations. And um, he seems to be, uh, I think that he's confident that they're going to be able to make it this year. And um, uh, I know that they're also, uh, I, did we touch base on it? I think we, yeah, we touched base on it when, um, when we met with them too about how we're trying to become a training incentive. Uh, to try to train people to drive. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go over that some more with DPW. But anyways, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, snow and ice um, is pretty well covered, and he's confident that this budget should last them uh, for the remainder of the year. So a couple more things. Uh, so he, he also mentioned that um, salt has also gone up dramatically. So he said both salt and fire and people have gone up at 30%. So we've had a couple of years of lower snow numbers, but we're still spending maybe as much as we had spent a few years ago with higher snow numbers because of this. Mm -hmm. um, and then one other thing, I didn't realize this, I know that we are left deficit that send and that they, we can make transfers. They said, generally we don't do that. So if they spend an extra 200,000, they would make it up elsewhere rather than go to town meeting and ask for transfer. It's only when those Really, really bad snow events happen. Then they offer transfers. Right, questions, Topher. So I'm just going to say the flip side of the guaranteed pay is that if we call them, they have to come. Right. right. So, right. so if we had a really big storm season, 
they're on the hook to be filing terms of their law. Mm -hmm. Other questions? So, uh, are, do we historically always just budget one global number and then in the actual see the breakout, or do we ever budget per thing? Just curious. We asked my dad, dad he didn't know why they come on there to do that. He's like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> it's always just one number, and then in the uh, actual yeah. we see the breakout. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Yeah. This is maybe for you. Do you know when the last time is we appropriated a snow and ice deficit? Uh, yeah, that was 2015. Yeah, that was a two. Yeah, that was a two point three million dollars spend. Yeah, yeah. That's the apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was the only real winter we've had. That was so. So one of the reasons. So it's working. Yeah. 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 So also one of the reasons we increased the reserve fund. Right. And ruling averages made it very very close. Mm -hmm. Budget. Hmm. But only because we've been lucky to have sort of low snow events. Yeah. Other questions? All right. So, um, Jordan, Jennifer, do you have a motion? So we have the motion to approve um, the removal of snow and ice budget for one million uh, one hundred seventy-two thousand uh, thirteen dollars. Second. Uh, any further questions? All right, if you have a motion, it's been seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, it's unanimous. Thank you very much for doing snow and ice. Anything else? Any other questions? Vote our budget or else. We're gonna, what? I said, vote our budget or we're going to send out a lot of text <laughs> yeah. in a very timely manner. All right, so let's talk minutes. I mean, warrants. Yeah, I'm going to take it from here. Okay, I don't know if anybody who saw the one still did. prints out a copy of the budget of the warrant, but let me go through it. Um, I guess the short answer is there's not a huge amount uh, of additional things we need to do, but let me just sort of go through it article by article. Uh, the whole bunch of the first articles are all bylaw changes, uh, which are under the authority of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, then it's all the zoning changes and then all the uh, finance. Um, article um, seven, is a betterment uh, bylaw revision on private ways. And so, Christine, I think when the town manager comes in, we might just want to ask him what he has in mind here, because uh, anything that's not covered by the assessments, you know, somehow it impacts us. But I don't think it, it's not a finance article, but directly, but I think we should ask him about it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and just just so you know, I could confirmed with him that he and Alex will be in to meet with us on Wednesday, March 13th. 3.13 for the manager. Can I ask her a question about that? So, okay. So, hold on. Can I ask a question about So that's a significant expense. They, they repaved all of Marion Road in my neighborhood so that the buses could get up and down it. Um, so I think it's related to us unless he's going to do it within the budget he get, gets for the year. Well, I mean, the assessments are supposed to be paid entirely by the budget. Yeah. So I don't think that happened on Marion Road, knowing some of the abutters. Well, then, I, I, I suggest you ask the manager when he, had, when he comes in. Okay. That's what I suggested. Okay. okay. The um, eight is the annual town meeting. That's just sort of the flexibility. But nine and 10 are the times. Mm -hmm. And while that's not a finance article, it's a procedural article that could impact yes. our, our meetings. Oh, right. Now, yeah. over the last few years, myself, Charlie, and now you, we haven't really had that much to do from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Um, but if, if this passes and town meeting starts at 7.30, you know, then we might have to start at seven. So that might be something that 
Now, and of course, that would impact the selectmen also. So they might have, sorry, select board. Um, they might have something to say about that, but and the redevelopment board. I'm sorry. And the ARB. The yeah. Redevelopment board too. So uh, the rest of the articles, I didn't see any particular financial impact. Article 21 is a home rule legislation to amend the senior citizen property tax exemption. It's been inserted by the Board of Assessors and has those magic words or funded by an appropriation or transfer from existing funds. So I think it might be interesting to have the Board of Assessors or one of their representatives come in and say, you know, what do you have in mind here and how much is this going to cost? Because then they'll say, oh, that doesn't cost anything. It comes out of the overlay. Well, <laughs> the overlay we use to partially fund our budget. So yeah, it does have a, at least a, it might not be a big one, but we should, we should understand it. So that's Article 21, Board of Assessors. Um, okay, then you go through all the zoning articles. I didn't see anything there, which I thought John Leone is trying to get his Winter Street property back into the MBTA again. Okay, now we get to the finance articles and probably 90% of them are the same. Um, we do have amendments to the 24 budget. So that's the town manager um, to find out. Now last year he put this in and then we didn't, we didn't make any changes, but we should ask about that. And then the rest of these articles are pretty straightforward. Um, Al, if you would roll up just a little bit, I saw our appropriation for um, public educational uh, government sorry. programming from ACMI. Hey, yeah, that's finance. We, we, yeah, we, uh, standard. yeah, yeah. It used to be that the money we take in would go directly to the cable company. Um, but about 44 years ago, the uh, Department of Revenue said, no, that's got to be appropriated. So instead of going directly there, it has to reappropriate it. And then, so that's what that's about. Yeah, starting, um, with article, starting with Article 35 on until almost the end, it's, it, our articles we will, we typically, report on. Yeah. But there are a couple of, at least one new one. Uh, Article 51, I get to coordinate with, Her with the Council on Aging because they keep putting in the Harry Barber as a separate article and we keep putting it in the committees and commissions. So I think what we need to do next year is add the Council on Aging Harry Barber program right into the wording of the Article 46 commissions and committees and then I'll talk to them about getting rid of it. I mean, it's not a big deal, but it's just extra, an extra article we have to deal with. Now, the sort of new ones are Article 53, which is the takings of Stratton's uh, school safe routes. And this was put in last year, but uh, they ended up not doing something because they weren't ready um, for, the, for the bits and pieces. And so... Uh, I assume they are, but that'll be something. Now it's uh, community <clears throat> development. So we'd want to ask the town manager about that and he could bring whoever he wants to. to. Okay, and now you've got the private way repairs revolving fund, which could tie into that uh, revolving fund changes. Um, so I think we need to ask the manager about that. Article 55 is the public library construction program match. Uh, we had gotten a, uh, a grant to fund uh, the Robbins Library back in 1988. We were like the first ones and we got that whole addition to it. It doesn't say Fox in this, but I'm assuming that's what they are referring to. Yeah, yeah. They're uh, so I was, I was hoping we were talking about this a little bit before. Uh, if, if they can put housing on top of the Fox, they could have a project like we did here. 
back in 1980, we built a police station and a housing project on the same piece of land. I, I don't know if it's actually attached to each other, but it certainly is close to it. And we got two entities to work together to create a much bigger thing. Perhaps if they could work with the housing authority or maybe the housing corporation, we could have a much more productive project, but we'll see what they say. Charlie? Thank you. Uh, so why is this uh, in the operating budget, not capital budget? Uh, good question. I don't know. I it just. Uh, I mean, traditionally, if you have a, a program plan, um, it goes in the capital budget. And if this is a grant, they have the ability in the capital budget to accept grants in the other category. That's the Board of Library Trustees and the Library Director. So I don't know if that thought process was at that level. I could, uh, why don't I give Timor a call and see if the capital budget. I don't think he's chair. Anymore. It's Chris Moore. It's Chris yeah, Moore. It's Chris, Chris, it's Chris Moore. Moore then, chair. Oh. Um, but I don't recall them putting a, an item. We are having the library director in March or four to talk about this. Okay. Are you our representative on capital budget? Yeah. Oh, so you don't you you haven't seen this at all? I I, I don't remember. I'm just looking to see if it um, was even on the list. And Fox Library was on the sort of to do list several years ago. Mm -hmm. When the library did come to us with a request, I just don't remember anything about the clock. Let me just look at the list. Just an appropriation for the celebration. No, it didn't. Yeah, so you're right. So it should. Oh, yeah. Should have gone to yeah. you. Um, that could be an issue we raised with the manager, also, I suppose. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we'll have to, like, we can talk to the library director on the 4th and the manager on the 13th or whatever I said. Now, Article 56 is local option. Um, this is more, it's almost more, to, more of a policy. Um, it's just to allow the uh, uh, trust fund commissioners to use the uh, prudent investor rule as opposed to whatever rule they have now um, on that. So the manager put that forth. My guess is, is to give them some more flexibility in how they invest, invest trust funds. Uh, do, you do you think this is a finance committee issue, though? Yeah. Well, do, do you think the finance committee should wait in on 56. You say yes. Master. You say yes. You say yes. And we should weigh in. I'm sorry. You know, <clears throat> sorry. Did you say my yes? My hearing aids just die. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, in a minute. Yes. I'm just. Yes, we she should need, weigh in. She needs to, you need yeah. to repeat so, your question. So you, do you feel like we should weigh, the finance committee should weigh in on Article 56? Uh, or should we wait to talk to the manager? I'd say wait and talk to the manager and just see exactly what you had to, to do. Um, so, Madam Chair, yes. can I just note? So, as a legacy item on the committee, when town officials move outside of the investment schedules, we get involved. And so, if it happened once before, if it happened again, we'd get involved. So, I think we should at least hear it because if we're setting rules, that we may someday have to look at. Mm. We should at least see them on the way in. Okay. Appropriation master plan update, $50,000 to update the master plan is endorsed. And this is by the director. Um, it's his director, so I think we should ask the manager about this. I just had a couple of thoughts in mind. You know, we had a consultant to develop the master plan. I. And this is just me. I'm wondering if we got the we should have the resources within planning community development to update it ourselves. Fifty thousand seems like a lot of money, but 
That's just a quick observation. So now, now we're getting into the or most of the other standard articles. Local option taxes, which is the article we've had in forever, which never gets, you know, we always vote no action because nothing's there, could be slightly relevant this year. Uh, the uh, governor um, has proposed a whole series of uh, revenue raising options for cities and towns. Um, so this could be there. What I've heard from uh, the MMA is it's it's going over like the proverbial lead balloon uh, in the legislature uh, on the grounds that we just voted, you know, uh, asked the voters and they approved four million dollars of uh, no four percent of new revenues for the millionaires tax. This is not the time that we're going to vote more taxes for cities and towns. So it could be relevant. Um, my guess is the legislature is not going to give it to us. I have a quick question, though. Um, whatever the budget would be voted for would be until July. So, so would it not be relevant yet this year? Because well, they've defined <laughs> they've divided up different parts of the. It's not what you propose to the legislature is not just a revenue. Also has other bits and pieces of municipal. So it's been divided up between a couple of different committees. So it wouldn't so, be in the budget. It's as a separate bill. We, we could theoretically see something by the time we have to actually vote on it. Okay. But I wouldn't uh, wager a lot of money on it. So, uh, okay, and then the rest of the articles are the same. They, a little bit of a difference in the order. The uh, Alex, our finance director, asked that the collective bargaining be put at the end. Um after the fiscal stability, and I never had a chance to talk to him about it, but I, I don't have a, a big problem with that. Uh, hopefully anything that we have will be voted on before we go to print. And so uh, if something comes up after we go to print, then we might just have to table 64, which is the fiscal stability fund, uh, do the collective bargain and then go back and adjust. And then we have, well, resolution on MBTA service. Uh, by one of our favorites, uh, Don Quixote's of our town. Show <laughs> down. <laughs> All right, thank you, Al. Any questions, Topher? Yeah, I was wondering about Article 42, the Transportation and Infrastructure Fund. Is that a standard one? I don't... It is. The, the difference is in the last few years, they've been putting in a dollar amount. It, it, they're like 62000 or something like that, right down to the penny. This year, they just set a sum of money. But we've done doing that for at least two years now. John, I wonder if you had any conversations with the town moderator about uh, what items would be put into the Send agenda and when that consent agenda gets voted. Because if you remember last year, um, there was a feeling among at least one member at the time meeting that it was too close to the finance committee report. Yeah. Um, one of the problems with the consent agenda is, is people don't start focusing on it yeah. until the first night and then they get all uptight. Yeah. Um, I've almost, I, I've suggested because I'm involved in a lot of this stuff. I suggested to the moderator that maybe do the consent agenda the second day, uh, even though that means we actually have to dispose of a couple articles. And the other thing I suggested is that anybody who yells hold has to get up, identify themselves, precinct, <laughs> and then say hold. Might yeah. put a damper on some of it, but we'll and, see. And what I'm going to try to do is get our finance committee report finished. Yeah. Earlier. That's why I'm pushing for everything to be completed by the 25th, because that hopefully will give the three of us the time um, to work over Easter again and uh, get it done. Uh, so that might help that situation. Uh, and maybe this year that person has somebody else who he wants to target. So. 
Okay. <laughs> I was going to say another possible thing would be to actually have a finance, I guess it would be two consent agendas because you need majority and two thirds that you put together and then you vote that right before the first finance article, which is going to be several nights in the town meeting. Oh, that'd be interesting. Another thing that um, has been percolating in my mind, and, and I've spoken to a couple of people, is maybe the finance committee should have a, 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 a meeting after we've done our business before town meeting to educate town meeting members, newly elected town meeting members or older town meeting members about what we do, how we came, how we how we created this budget and then let them ask questions then so that when we get to the opening night of town meeting, maybe there won't be any holds on some finance issues. But we would need to organize to have that meeting. So I, I'm kind of curious whether there's some interest among people here tonight to try to um, do something like that. I think it's a great idea. How do we encourage the people who need to attend and ought to attend to attend. I think we can get town um, town alerts out. We can get use the town meeting list. The moderator can can help. Um, um, go ahead, Jen. Yeah, I think the oh, the problem is timing. Yeah, because there's so is. many proof of meetings happening right around that point that we want to do this, and we of course have the issue. Right. I mean, it's almost like if there was already, if it was like a Thursday in the first week or something, would it maybe work better than trying to shove it in beforehand? Once we're already rolling. We're already rolling, everyone's back, their patients over, precinct things are over. So. But at that point, we might have the consent agenda. But exactly. No, right, exactly. So. Um, any other thoughts about that? We they are having precinct meetings, you know. Well, Lynn Dickens has been trying to sort of organize that for the last couple of years, um. So we could try to do it through that, um. And you know, and they usually combine a couple of precincts, uh -huh. which means a couple of us, uh, could ask for ten or fifteen minutes at the beginning of these precinct meetings. Mm -hmm. To quickly present some of the issues and take any questions on it. Um, that guy, he had hand up and then I will reconsider my question. Yeah. Annie? So, usually the precinct meetings are not for town meeting members. They're intended to be for town meeting members to talk to the public and figure out what's on the warrant. So if we want to have an educational meeting for town meeting members about their fiscal responsibilities, I think we should do that as a separate. And I'm happy to help with that. Michael? If we did this in the studio at ACMI, they would run it several times before town meeting. That's a good point. Just as our own panel discussion, and they could broadcast it. You know, I don't know how many times Great. they fit it in, but. Except we, but we need, but we would like questions. Yeah, that's the problem. We, we want. Call in numbers. No. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. Tara and then Charlie. Doesn't, yeah, if we if we did something like that, we could. Isn't there like a new town meeting member orientation? That maybe we like. Is isn't there something every year that they do? Yeah. There is. Yeah. 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 yeah we can look into that. Yeah, that's actually. So I, I usually help them on that orientation and we may not talk about finance, but I don't, you know, there's a lot of other stuff jammed into that. So I don't is know. there an is there an opening in that type of meeting for a a a more full discussion about to enable people to ask questions about the budget? So and then that also means yeah. The report has to be in people's hands. Yes, it's really more a this is how town meeting runs kind of training, mm -hmm. right? You know, this is what these various motions mean, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, we could talk 
when we get back around to considering this year's agenda for that meeting, I can suggest that we have an extension of it possibly for people who want to talk about the finance articles or something like that. Um, we have in the past offered a couple of different dates for that training as well, so that, and we record it. So let me see what. But are there reports ready? Are there reports ready by the time that We usually don't do that until well after the election because we don't know who's who. Yeah. So I would think so. Okay, we're so we're wrapping by March 25th. And, we should at least have right. a draft report ready yep. that could be considered. Right. I would hate to get a draft report out to people and then have a second report out. So it, it would have to be, and I think people would want it to be close in time to beginning of town meeting. Well, so let me see what send you some information about yeah. what we did the last two years yeah. so that you have an idea what the agenda is and what the timing was, and then we can determine where right. I, I also think the precinct meetings too have value because oh, yes absolutely. because yes it is for the public but it is yeah. an opportunity for new precinct new town meeting members to get presumably to gather together to hear yeah what happens at these things and 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 it might be an opportunity to yeah to educate I mean they don't usually at those I always attend mine and we don't get to talk about how town meeting works we get overrun by Right, the public wanting to talk about particular articles. Right, so but yeah. some of those are finance articles, and to be able to, as Al described, yeah. take ten minutes or five minutes, mm -hmm. seven minutes, and say, "I'm I'm from the finance committee, and I represent mm -hmm. your precinct, and and here's a report. You should have it. Here's how we developed it. Here are um, the main things you need to know this year, and here I am asking questions." And here's my here's my information. You go on the website, you, our website. You can get the email from for all of us. You can you can um, you can go to the recordings. You can um, I, I, because, yeah. we could if, if we have the uh, finance committee report online a week and a half ahead of the town meeting yeah. in the mail the week we put in a sheet. All our, I don't know if you want to do this. Or just names and phone numbers and precincts, and say, "Do you have any questions? Call your precinct person, and uh, try to get it that way." And that way, when we get to consent agenda, either the first or second night, uh, you know, we can get a lot of most of it done. Um, John, and then Sophie, and then Dean. Yeah, my my question relates to Article Twenty One. Looks like a uh, home rule legislation to amend the senior citizens property tax exemption. As I read that, that just seems like almost like a touch up to some legislation that already passed. And I just want to confirm that it's just a touch up and it, it has no more budget implications. But it, I don't think so. The, the question was there was an open question, but we want to ask the time manager. Well, that was, that's what I, I heard from that. Oh, okay. Al, you did mention that. I didn't care. Yeah, you did mention yeah, that. Yeah, and it was one of the things that we were talking about. Yeah, my apologies. Yeah. No, it's okay. I, I yeah. just have to notice it when I went back and looked. I didn't catch yeah. it when you mentioned it the first time. Yeah, I, I just, uh, you know, so many times in the past we've increased exemptions for this or for that. And we always get the answer well, this isn't going to cost anything. Yeah. Well, it does cost something. And even though, number one, it might not cost a lot of money, and number two, it serves a good purpose. It should still be out there. Yeah, I mean, and you step back a bit, that whole exemption, my back to the envelope math, it says at most they can't cut the property tax by more than 1%. So, I mean, I'm looking at property taxes about, let's just say, 150 million. So, if they gave the full rebate or whatever you want to call it, there'd be about a $1.5 billion uh, offset to our property tax base. And I, yeah. yeah. And the final question, have we heard anything about that? Like, in other words, you know, how that will impact property tax? <laughs> you know, are they going to give the whole thing out or is that going to be addressed later on? The property tax rebate that was on the ballot this year? The town manager has to mention it. Yeah, so I, I believe that that rebate is based on your, could be wrong. But I believe it's based on your income and there's an application, and so it's just a pool of money for people 
people whose lives are going to be based on their circumstances. And then we change, I, I think. The money available. Yeah, well, the money available is probably pretty consistent, but we change the circumstances, the, the eligibility circumstances. And we may have increased the income limit or something like that. I, I forget exactly what we did. So we, we won't necessarily be spending the 1.5. Okay. So it sounds like people less people than 1.5. Yes. So 1.5 would be yes. the ceiling. Yeah. But it would even go lower than that. I was just wondering if it's a big budget item. It sounds like not necessarily not necessarily an enormous budget item. Okay. We have a we have a variety of programs intended to help people on a fixed income. <clears> and they they never have the budgetary impact that they could if they were maximized. Got it. Does that make sense? Yep. Thanks. Sorry, you had your hand up. Oh no, that was that was before. Okay. Yeah, uh, Sophie, Dean, and then Charlie. It was just a comment going back to meetings and saying that Charlie has always been fabulous at the precinct meetings that I've attended. And he always talks and answers questions. Now, if you send me to a meeting to answer questions, <laughs> no, it's not going to be the same answers and as good. So uh, we might have to do some internal training before we all uh, feel comfortable for the newbies to go out and answer. I'll be, but they've always been beneficial, and they, at least in our precinct, people always ask about the financial budgets, and Charlie always gets to talk. So well, you'd be there with sure. Well, but I represent a different precinct because uh, I'm like you. I I'm I'm float serious. around, I'm so <laughs> I'm going to have Charlie to lean on. I, 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 I think there's a suggestion that, well, there are often are joint precinct meetings, yeah, so, like um, and I, and I, if, if, if you were to show up at let's say precinct 19 and said, you know, I'm from the finance committee, I don't live in this precinct, but um, I'm here to answer questions and we could just, if we, if we wanted to do that, we can just sort of divvy it up to make sure that somebody, at least one person from here was at a precinct, all of the precinct meetings um, to, to, to just you know, be there here. I, I can talk to you for a few minutes about finance committee, I'm here for, questions and right. here is how who you can contact. So just to throw I mean I was I'm all for that and had actually been wanting to do that the past couple of years based on my experience of Charlie speaking at ours but I'm um, unsure of myself to go there and do it. So yeah I I uh, I yeah I think you're pretty good with the numbers. Right? Uh, you surprised. Yeah. <laughs> you're surprised. We've, we've, little numbers. We won't make people do something that they don't comfortable with and maybe other people are so so comfortable doing that they don't mind going to multiple meetings. Um, um, <laughs> Dean. So actually it's a it's a very good feedback I was going to say. Um, I think when we talk about transparency and outreach I think all the ideas are, are great. What, what I would say through my professional experience is um, stakeholders it's amazing they actually value transparency far more than technical accuracy, yeah. right? So like I always tell people, like I'm on this tour right now at work where I have to present your results to shareholders. And like I emailed to 20 and two asked questions and the other 18 didn't even open the email. Um, I go to like our executive group and like six of them are on their phones and like out of eight, you know, like people are just totally like eyes glazed over like, please leave, right? <laughs> um, but then they send me these emails months later, like, thank you for being so transparent. And I'm like, you were outside the room on your phone the whole meeting. Like, what are you talking about, right? But what you learn through experience is like, like to your, like to your point, Sophie, it's like when you show up to the meeting and you're like, I'm from the finance committee, I'm here to answer your questions. And they're like, well, I don't have any questions. They then go tell people how transparent you were. And you're like, but you didn't ask me anything, right? And I, so I think what we do in these regards is it's important to be open to people and available to people. And even if the answer is, it's a really good question, I'll find out for you when you write it down. Let's go back to my computer there. I think whatever we do, just being out there is far more valuable than being technically sound on the answer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Charlie. Thank you. Um, so I heard, to I think we start to over. Make a comment before about having a separate um, consent agenda for the finance committee, and um, that brought to mind maybe we don't need a consent agenda for the finance committee because I recall several years back I can't remember whether it was John Morton or John Leone 
but the moderator approached the finance committee budget or the, or the town budget by saying, okay, um, just went through each number and, and said, does anyone want to discuss this put, and put a hold on it? Which is the same thing they do on the with the consent agenda. But if it happens at the night that you're hearing the finance committee budget, you, you pass the transparency test, as Dean just pointed out. You're not trying to pull a fast one on people the first night of town meeting. You're saying, okay, we're going to open this budget up for discussion. And you find out who wants to talk about it and who doesn't. As opposed to what happened last year, I think a lot of people just raised their hand on different budget numbers because they were, I don't know, they were, you know, out of fear or something like that. And, and we had to go through those budgets and then we find out nobody wanted to discuss them anyway. So, I, I mean, I would argue that we don't need consent agenda for the finance committee budget. Well, it's the moderator's call. He, it's his dance. Um, so I can have a conversation with him. Um, I, yeah, I, I understand. So oh, I'm just confused. I thought that the consent agenda was not for the budget, which we do do exactly that each year, but for these other ones, like Article 49, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. That, all those good articles. Not well, last year we did. So I think every year we, we go through the budget and we say, okay, this budget, oh, does anyone want to hold it? Next budget. That, that seems like what we do. Uh, well, I think the last couple of years we, got a, we had the Finance Committee budget on the Mm -hmm. okay. whole budget. I don't think the whole budget, but 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 what yeah. this member did was pull out things like the you know water bodies thing, you know all the other things. Oh, you're like the agenda. So, yeah. anybody else have anything, Josh? Um, yeah, I, I I think it's been Sophie. I've been at those meetings, and Sophie's asking Charlie all those questions. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I, I would just echo Michael's uh, uh, suggestion about acne. I think it's, I mean, why not? And I think it could probably identify some of the things that are likely to be somewhat controversial and, and maybe um, James Milan could ask some of those questions or something to it, like the other and department has. We could have a studio audience. We could have a text line for questions. We could have a you know, Facebook page for questions. Uh, lots of ways to send it in while it's happening. Yeah, and what, Type of work is that going to require from us? Mm. That's the, that's the other thing. I don't think it would require any more preparation than we would have for a, a public meeting, right? except to be be behind a desk when the cameras go on and uh, you know, maybe stop and you know retake a point if somebody flubbed what they meant to say and not too much right, extra work. We call that longstanding policy. I mean, you could do it and, and not. You could record it and say, oh, no, that didn't go very well. We don't want to broadcast it. I mean, we, we could kind of own it oh, in a sense rather than and live. So, so I think that it's a great idea for us to all show up at precinct meetings. I always go to mine. I think it's a great idea to do something on ACMI for the general public. That if you want to educate new town meeting members, that's a different discussion. They have to vote on this stuff. And so they need to understand the procedure and how the budget's developed and what they do and don't have control over. And that is seriously separate. Yeah. So I'm not saying don't do all those things, but I don't think it gets us out of training new town meeting members. But that's a your meeting, isn't it? Well, we don't usually train specifically on the finance articles. We train on the process. So if you want us to expand that, I'll see what we can do, but it's a jam-packed hour and a half. And I think I'm the only finance committee member involved with it. So, would it be something about, could it be something where we take we offer an extra half hour that we run? It's not added to your burden in that group. That's what just I'm to back is that we, we create our own and then you piggyback. Exactly. Offer. So we either have a, a separate agenda item where finance committee members come and answer questions and present information, um, either. You know, two hours of a long time, but we can pack it on, or we could do something slightly separate, and I think we'd still get an audience. So, how many people do we have? 
How many child living members do you have? Probably usually have 30 people, maybe more. I mean, the new town meeting members show up. They're terrified. <laughs> so they want they want to what and find out. It, it would be helpful for even existing and existing town meeting members to be able show up. To, also, there's yeah. there's instead of yeah on day ten of town meeting mm -hmm. standing up and asking what is what is this right what, do, what do you say, mean by long term statement <laughs> right <laughs> be, be able to say before we even open town meeting what 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 is this what is pay what is pay no, um, Carolyn and then Al. When is that meeting that you currently have? So, so we do it after the election, but before town meeting starts. It usually depends on the availability of those of us who are going to lead it. Mm -hmm. It's been pretty close to the start of town meeting the last couple of years, like the week before. Okay. So the timing is good yeah. for mm -hmm. us. Um, but let me go back and from my computer and send an email or something like that. Or could you remind me that? Yes, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> is it on a Saturday or Sunday, or is it in the evening? It's usually in the evening. And like okay. I said, it's the when we record it. Oh, all right. Right, okay. So, yeah. and that's going to be it. And we do get a lot of questions, which is why it fills the hour and a half. Right. So, uh, I think maybe one thing we could do a little bit more of is what we do already and add the comments section. Uh, at the at the uh, right under our motion, and uh, usually it's just a sentence or two, um, and I think it probably just takes the wind out of a lot of uh, a lot of discussion. You know, maybe we could expand that a little bit. The selectmen go too far. I mean, their things are twenty paragraphs long, but a lot of ours. Maybe we could add some more comments <clears throat> to some of the other articles, beef them up a little bit, but no more than three, four sentences max, because otherwise they won't read them. It's easier for them to ask questions at town meeting. But maybe we could buoy that a little bit more. And that way they have it, you know, a week before town meeting, and there's the answers. And yeah. I think that's a good idea. Um, any other comments? Right. Jennifer? Yeah, I just want to say that it's not always just that somebody not understanding something, but it's this, you know, town meeting is one of the opportunities where people have to ask that particular question or item. Just because we, there isn't any other opportunity. It's not the best opportunity. It's not the best place to do it, but there really isn't any other <laughs> sort of opportunity if you want to know how much we spend on salt, for example, or something like that. 90% <laughs> of the questions on the budgets have really nothing to do with the budgets themselves. They don't, but there isn't really a good opportunity, right? There's not like a town manager doesn't make Self available for a day to answer questions, finance me doesn't make itself available. So it really is sort of what's for mm -hmm. us to do. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, this is this is a way to get yeah. people to ask those questions yeah. answered without taking up time on town meeting if you don't need to take that yeah. time on town meeting. I'm not I, I, this isn't to to chill any debate. Um on town meeting for it's it's just to cut down on the questions that could easily yeah. be answered and and maybe people that aren't even asking them on for a town meeting because they, they just aren't comfortable doing that but they, they want to know yeah and, and that too is a service we, we should be doing. so yeah. uh, so these are all good ideas Annie um you'll find out I'll find out stuff I'll thinking about what we yeah. uh, the options are and I think Pardon says all of the above in yeah. some format or another, yeah, yeah. but we can, we can think some more about it. Um, I was the one thing to say that Dean and I could reprise the Dean and Annie show. Yeah. Always a good time. Well, that's a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> how, how do people feel about um, the warrant articles about starting town meeting at, at 7 30? Uh, what do people do? People care enough that, that we should no. take a stand on it, or or what? what I'm sorry, the, the when it starts. The, yeah, the starting <clears throat> town meeting at at uh, seven thirty rather than eight o'clock. Dean Jordan and then Mike. I think that the town may, as long as the town moderator continues to enforce the rule on when substitute motions have to be on the chairs. 
starting at 7.30, it's become a largely irrelevant action. I mean, I've, I've always correlated the pre-town meeting, finance committee meetings becoming like snooze fests to the, I always tied it to the fact that those substitute motions had to be on the chair the whole meeting before. And so at, at current, in the past, you could wake up on a Monday of town meeting and get oh, blindsided yeah. by noon that something was going to be on the floor of town meeting that night. That doesn't happen anymore. And because it doesn't happen, there are no urge. There is no way an emergency finance committee committee meeting would have to occur before town meeting. We would need like forty eight hours notice that something was coming forward. And so I don't think it's the big deal it used to be because I think the facts have changed underlying that. Sure. No. I mean, maybe that answers my question. But is it really consequential to us? I know we typically have our meetings at seven thirty to eight beforehand, but does it really affect us that much if it moves us back 30 minutes? In the, past, in the past, we've had more members with small kids. And so it, in there, in that case, it does. They're more about just trying to get through dinner. And get right, through. and yes. Yeah. Yeah. When, when you think that's of, been, yeah, when you think if, if you, if let's just say, if you work in Boston and you don't get out until five, then you have to find your way from Boston to home and then presumably have dinner with your family before you go to town meet the finance committee and then town meeting and then get home at 11 30 11 o'clock so for people who have a family who they want to have dinner with um it may be who have a family and who aren't working remotely right it, it, it may be problematic um michael when I was a Newtown meeting member, I appreciated the opportunity to get what seemed to be a relatively late start for an eight o'clock uh, town meeting. I was home for dinner. I was home for homework time. I was almost home until bedtime. And I think a lot of town meeting members uh, with, with young kids, school age kids, uh, still feel the same way. I'd rather stay up the extra half hour uh, on the other end and, and have that you know, time before, before daddy has to go to another meeting. Do people, how many people think it's better to start just a, a hand? How many people think it would be better to start town meeting at eight? And how many people, two questions. Who, who would like town meeting to start at 7.30 and who would like town meeting to start at eight? Knowing that we would be meeting half an hour before. So we have a don't care category. Yeah, some of us don't care, and yeah, I don't want to okay. vote if I don't so, care. All right, <laughs> who would like to? Who would like Tommy to start at eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Who would like it to start at seven thirty? Two. Who does? Who? Abstain. So then abstain. One, <laughs> one two, three. So so the consensus is I don't care. Followed by eight, don't change it, and followed by yeah. But I'm not going to kill myself. Yeah, I, no one has suggested meeting. I've liked my idea, which is eight to ten thirty. Yeah. I know. I, like that I mentioned that All to I'm everybody. I'm not going to. I'm seven thirty. Jennifer, you need to put that forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, but I want to go longer and get them. Oh, you want to get? Oh, I, I oh. that last half an hour is the one that kills me. Yeah. <laughs> My, my, cons my concern that last half hour because we <laughs> my concern right. is recruiting, recruiting people for the finance committee and recruiting people for town meeting. And I don't know. Um, it, it would be it, if I were not working able to work remotely, it would be a hardship mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. to get leave my office right. in South, State, South Station at five yeah. and then be able to actually eat dinner before going and i don't know who we would be excluding if we we did that and i i don't i don't know whether we're excluding more people by starting early or if we're excluding more people by starting later so can okay. i just put her out there part probably knows when we get to april meetings I'm on the baseball field till 7.30 with my kids because baseball goes until about 7.30. Mm -hmm. And I call into the meetings when you guys don't have a quorum. <laughs> so 
meeting at seven, like, look at, I, I mean, like, it, I, I physically wouldn't have somebody to pick up my kids from the baseball field. And come home. So, like, yeah. it's just not possible. Yeah. Um, so you lose. Right. Yeah. Lose yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. the parents that have the young kids who aren't self-sufficient right. yet. Right. <laughs> But we can call in. I mean, that's the beauty of technology, right? If, if we have a seven o'clock meeting and you can take the calls, I've done the meetings from the baseball fields <laughs> or the soccer fields, and that's mm -hmm. fine. But it, it is actually it's as close as possible to yeah. be in multiple places. Uh, or the geometry. Right. All right. Um, all right. So that mentioned, I think that's what we mentioned. Yeah. That's it for the warrant. I will have the town manager in and ask questions about what we've covered. And again, that's on the 13th. Um, just scheduling. Um, who? So we're not meeting on the 14th and we're not meeting on, the, on either the 19th or the 21st. So our next meeting will be the 26th. Does anyone think they may have budgets on the 26th or the 28th? We can start up my business, I'm sure. Right. I don't know if we can get involved that day, but we need to be good at it. All right. Fabulous. Great. All right. So that hopefully will be the last week in, in February. So I'm right now on um, March 4th. Are you still planning on reclass on? Yes, we can do reclass <laughs> on March 4th, and we could do, I just sent an email out. We could do um, insurance on oh, I'm the 20th. Out. Yeah, is that, yeah, is that what yep. the email says? The yep. 20th. Right. Great. Because Which we'll means meet. that water and sewer can be done. On the 20th, if the insurance numbers are there, sure. All right. And I get <laughs> All right. Oh, but we need to send, um, Karen needs to send you insurance numbers when she has them. You told me that before. So if you two can yeah. just well, talk about what too. you both need. They know that too, but last year it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. I had to go mm -hmm. last year. I think I had to ask Al. Oh. Yeah. But they know. Sure I mean, I asked them. They just never sent numbers. And we're having the library director on the 4th. Um, will you be able to do the rent? Yeah, yeah, reclass will be the same day as human uh, resources. Is that right. okay? Yeah. And that's back in February. You mean March? On the 4th? On the 4th. The same day as the library? No, no, no. Reclass we can do as early as the 29th, right? Aren't we meeting on the 20th? Not no. until the 4th after the 29th. We're meeting on February 26th, February 28th. So yeah, when is the new library class meeting? It's not on the 29th. It's on the 20th. 20th of February. So that will. You asked about the week of the 26th. Let me look at the email. Sorry. I just actually, you if you have your email open, I sent emails to you from the beginning yeah. of the Well, okay. So the lever director will be on in on the 4th. Capital planning is the 6th. Minuteman is the eleventh. I assume we're doing we're starting seven thirty. Yeah. Um, the manager will be in on the thirteenth, and scenic byway people will be in on the thirteenth as well. And so will community preservation. I. Right. Um, so should I ask them to come later, or do you want to do yes. them first and then the town manager? Uh, uh, let's because I said I, yeah. I confirmed eight with them, but well, let's talk. Let me let me know. Okay. Uh, water bodies will be in on the 18th, right? That's still that's still happening, right, Carolyn? Water, water bodies, bodies on, on the, 18th. the 18th. Yes. All right, and um, the schools will be in on the 25th. Have you heard from any? Committees or commissions? Yes, I have heard from. I have heard from. So the scenic byway is asking for more, and then three others that are not. Um, arts and culture not asking for more. Tourism and economic development not asking for more. Zero waste Arlington not asking for more. Shall we vote those budgets now? 
and Conservation Commission will come the same day as water bodies. And we're going to ask on culture and there's one other committee that's a lot of money. Human, so human rights or disabilities. Yes, 20, 25,000. We weren't going to ask culture for their level yeah, funded. Level funded. Oh, right. We, we, if everybody, we've always said if, if they're not going to raise it, we don't yep. want to see you. Right. But there was two groups that, because their, their committee was fairly big, like culture, arts and culture, and one other. It was this is, this disability. Is, right. There was historically, because of years ago, they had arts and culture came up at town meeting because I had asked the question before I was on this committee. Mm -hmm. And you had the answers, but I can't remember. <laughs> they had increased, they'd asked for more, yes. and you had agreed and said, but next year we have to see something, something. Right. And so it kept coming up. And I think the past couple of years, we've said once it's more than 10 or 15, once it reaches a certain level, we would want them to come and answer questions, subsets of. Yes, but I think, to. I think I thought this year that we had determined that arts and culture, if they're level funded, we're okay. We're just going to hear the same spiel, and they always bring twenty slides. So no budget. <laughs> um, you know, and they're they're not asking for an increase in their funding. And I think our experience is they're never going to decrease. Right. So, Although our experience, I will say, with disability is we did keep having coming in, and we did do decrease it right. last year. So yeah, it right. is possible to decrease it if. No, no, I, I get questions. it. I'm just saying that I, I I'm comfortable but, not asking. So, so in, but. all right. So, arts and culture, the uh, Commission on Arts and Culture is asking for the same amount they got last year, which was pretty much the same amount that they spent in the year before, mm -hmm. and in the ballpark of thirty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's thirty-five thousand last year. The actuals of 23 to 34, 35,000. Mm -hmm. um, so, who who feels that we should have them in to discuss their budget? Charlie? So, thank you. Uh, I, my question is who is concerned about how the arts and culture people are spending taxpayers' money? For me personally, I was last year and the year before. Last year they came in with a very good presentation and I, I felt that I was comfortable with how they were spending money. But that's me and I'm opening up to, to, to people so, here. But I'm saying on an ongoing basis, how do we be giving any organization $35,000 a year or $50,000 a year is dispersing the taxpayer's money to Group of private people, and you know, how do we know that it's being spent well? If we don't well, meet with them. how do we know that? Uh, well, we, I mean, we, we've just done it because they were the two large ones. We can't spend our time on three thousand dollar and two thousand dollar budgets all the time, but I think we should at least we could ask for a budget, yeah. I, I, ask for a budget for arts and culture. And ask it for a commission on disability. Those are the two bigger ones. And to be honest, asking for the budget, I think, can be very good for them. Second, right. second motion. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So, Annie, will you ask them for a budget? Sure. And Sophie, will you ask the silly budget? All right. And who else did we hear from? That? Um, Let's see. Oh, sorry. One, one quick question. So they, are they asking for an increase? You know, I haven't gotten an answer. I'd love to. Okay. Know. Okay. And are you asking uh, town to be uh, Harry Barber? Um, am I asking Harry Barber? Or somebody asking. Um, I, I will add that. Oh, yes. Let me add that to the list. Okay. Uh, okay. So, um, well, I guess, oh, right. Because they're not under this list. They're on the Warren articles. That's right. Okay. So um, the other ones we've heard from Scenic Byway, they're going to come in when the um, com uh, Community Preservation Act comes in. Um, and then Tourism and Economic Development, they don't need an increase and neither does zero waste. Um, 
All right. So let's talk about tourism and economic development. They're asking for 4275, which is what they got last year. Mm -hmm. Um yeah. Uh -huh. I, I would like to hear the tourism and economic development and scenic byway and the 250th anniversary groups are working together well. Tourism 250th and who else? Yeah, I'm saying they're all sort of related. They should be. They should be coordinated. So, would you like them to come in? Yeah, some mix of Who Who is in head of tourism? Uh, tourism is Angela. Yeah, and then Scenic Byway is. um. Clarissa, 250th. Um, is that in here? Oh, that's a Warren article. No, yeah. No. Okay. Do you want me to ask to see if Angela can come in on the on the day that the um, the 13th? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So zero waste. Level funding at three thousand. Um, how could people feel about zero waste? Is there a motion to approve zero waste at level funded at three thousand? So moved. Second. 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 All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. That. Madam Chair? Yes, Grant. Thanks. Might, just as a matter of policy, it might be, I mean, I thought Alan's suggestion was great that they don't have to appear, but presenting a budget in new appearance would be, I mean, that might be. I hate to do it for $3,000 for the, um, the last one, but if we do it for one, maybe it's nice to have it as a big policy. That's all I was thinking. I think it's great to have them submit a budget. Maybe not the big grant. Who else have we heard from? Anyway. Um, just the four. So yeah, just those four. Can you get in touch with everyone again and say you want some form of budget budget? Yep. And again, you have until you have until I told them this Thursday. This Thursday. What's the date for the budget? Um give them them another. Let's have it before we meet again. So give it, give it, give them until the um, 22nd. 22nd. Okay. So they have this week and then they have next week, but next week is the vacation week. Um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll ask. I'll, yeah. So, so each one of these make it to the 26th. 26. 26. Okay. They have, they have to. Give us a budget by the 26th and tell us because we're going to take a vote on the 26th. Okay. And what do I threaten them with? We're going to take a vote on the 26th. The 26th with no funding them if they don't give us a budget? Maybe. Okay. Maybe. Okay. I'll pass. Oh, Jordan. Yeah, I'm wondering, is part of the budget maybe just like a quick paragraph or a narrative for what they've been up to or how they plan on spending it? I'm sure that kind of goes with the budget, but for some of the ones you may not necessarily hear, maybe just a quick narrative that just explains what they're up to. Yeah, we're, we're going to get into the, you know, what's an adequate budget and what's not. Right. Um, how are they spending their money? That's, that's, that's really what we want to know. How okay. do they plan to spend their money? Yeah. Topher and then Josh. Yeah, I was going to say the description more than expenses or otherwise are possible. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Josh. Um, I, I think it's a good idea to ask them all for budgets, but I do have some hesitation that since these are all committees we're asking that they then have to draw something up and then they have to meet with their committees. And I know some of the groups I've been with that could take them several yeah. weeks to agonize over it. Yeah. So I I mean, would, a light hand would be good. I mean, yeah. something we'd like to have. How are they, how, what do they intend to spend their money on? Okay. Briefly. Yeah. 
Um, other than the 250th, can we um, approve the other celebration and events? Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Pickers Day, Tags, Town Day. But you see any reason not to do that today? And that sounds like a good idea. Okay, this is on page 195. These are all, and I haven't heard otherwise, um, level funded. So the fir first one is for the parade, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, and Picket Day Parade. You're at the uh, budget is five, six, six, seven. Is there a motion? One move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Where did we just write off? <laughs> <laughs> On page 195, uh, celebrations and events. Money for the parades, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, Patriots Day. Very specific. Um, flags on graves, we got to do this by state law. Um, we've been spending 4500 each year. Um, is there a motion? So I will second. second. All, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, unanimous. Um, town day. So moved. Second? Is there a second? All right. Any discussion? All in favor say yes. 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 Any opposed? I am going to hold off on the 25th until they come in on the 13th. They're coming in on the 13th. Well, oh, right. Okay. The, so uh, tourism and scenic byway. I'm not sure. Who um, is responsible for the you know? Uh, I don't. Um, I will I, I will look around for that. Alan, do you have options? I said Alan. Are you working on the 250th now? Uh, I'm working on the 250th. I don't know if Bob Tosi's oh. involved. I don't know if there's Okay, I thought, I thought you were. Sorry. No. Okay. I'm trying to spend much more than that. All right. All right. So, um, we will meet next on the 26th and then the 28th. And it sounds like we might have some budgets. Um, and then hopefully we'll have more committees and committee commissions to approve. We'll just try to run through all of them if we can. Um, and um, DPW, there are always lots of questions with DPW. Yep. Now is the time to look at the budget right. book right. and get your questions to yeah. Jennifer and Jordan. And, and facilities is next Tuesday, so get any questions for facilities and please. Yeah. Sophie. Uh, a bit of a random question, I know, but I, I learned about an hour before the meeting that there was a 2019 warrant article allowing the town to sell um, Prints and artwork from the Robbins Library collection. Yeah. Oh. There's a sale happening next week, I believe, and there was a sale that happened a year ago. Mm -hmm. And in the Warren article, it's or in the news article I read, it said that um, there was the money goes to the general yeah. fund. Yeah. But that there was going to be talk and discussion about allocating it back to the libraries. And I know you guys have talked about, you know. A new position, maybe that was wanted at some point. No money. Is there some connection between? I mean, there's been a changeover in town government. I know since then, but do we track any of that as finance committee of like when money? No. Becca, we did ask her how much money. Oh, you're going to sell something? How much money are you going to make? And I forget the number she gave me. I could look it up. It's very little. Mostly, they're trying to get rid of them to get the storage space back. Yeah. Um, it's not primarily a money making thing. Yeah. I could find out because I know we asked how much money are we going to make, but just technically they had to sell them. 
All right. I don't. I mean, I know the there was a, a, a curator at the MFA that I know that texted me. <laughs> Did you know that we, you guys were selling <laughs> these nice yeah, prints and stuff? So I don't know. It just they were not. Really they yeah. were taking up space yeah. and they were not precious. And the other thing you got to keep in mind is it's one time money. You can't put it into personnel anyway. So. Right. Topher and then Carolyn. Um, I was going to say that you know, there's been a lot of these things where pictures like ripped out magazines. I mean, this came up in our precinct too when that morning came up, and there was a library trustee there, a fellow precinct committee member who was able to explain this because people were like, My God, they're selling off all the artwork. Yeah. And yeah. it was like, No, it was a fire hazard and a storage pin. Yeah. I'm assuming these are the ones that you can. Borrow. It's yeah. like borrowing yeah. a book. Oh, it's not no. even those. No, this was a collection somebody left to the library. Oh, okay. And it's right. not very valuable. And okay. Therefore, and it was taking up space. Yeah, but like lots of space. Right. So they need to. Okay. They need the space. Anyone have anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. So in favor. Bye. 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 Bye.